Laner. Problem is, Maokai has been banned now by Samsung White in every single Boom. game, and they had no reason Easy. to stop banning it, because again, on yeah. the side of Samsung Blue, they ban Zillion on blue side, they ban Alistar on blue side, two of the purple side bans because they're so strong you should first pick them. Opens up for Samsung White to ban whatever they want. They target Acorn. Yeah. Once again, his Rumble is gone, and his Maokai, the main it's, tank pick for him. It's really disappointing that Acorn hasn't put enough practice into Alistar to feel comfortable first picking it because that is hurting their pick ban phase really heavily here. At least they react might with first the pick Rengar. They might first pick the Rengar here. Seeing as they leave it open and it's been such a problem for them. Spirit does play it, just not on the level of Dandy. We actually see the confidence a bit of Dade saying, I want that Jace out. It is way too controlling overall in the game and has been controlling Dade in that mid lane. Even when he was up, we saw Pawn, find, Pawn finding his kills around the map and guys, kind of called that one out there. That first pick, Rengar, coming out to Vicio. That will be now in the hands of Spirit, but Dandy can still wreak havoc with whatever he decides to go with. Yeah. They're not forced to pick yeah. that jungler since they already see it. It's the Twitch Janna that they may be locking in. Yep, and at least they can block the poke from Jace here because they have already banned right. it, so it's not as lethal as the early comps from Samsung White. At least they have banned or picked away what has been working for White, which is one of the most basic of strategies when you're trying yeah. to do things. And honestly, I do think it's time for Blue to go back to basics. They've tried to pull out yeah the Varus and Galio and all these strange things and beat White at their own game. But what they really need to focus on when everything's really on the line is what got them here. Late game control. Yes, and that's probably why Samson White decided to not pick Ryze here. Because again, Akon is not a big Ryze player. I'm sure he can play, but if he wants to pull it out or not, we're gonna have to see here. But if Ryze is being picked for Dada in the mid lane, you don't have enough wave clear safe wave clear like a Zix would have, like maybe a Zerath pick would have, to stall out the game. Rice is gonna have to be pretty much in your face when people siege on you. You have to gauge with the Ryze here because you are too short range. And that could be one of the reasons for White giving Rice once again to Samsung Blue here. And obviously because they want the Twitch and Janna pick and that's a Sona. Sona's a champion they've been putting a lot of practice in. And of the supports I've talked to, she is actually unanimously pretty strong. Yeah, she's kind of like just under the top tier support picks we've seen, like Nami, Nami, Janna, and Thresh, which we see most of the time. And she's extremely good against Janna in, in lane. Like in lane, she's so good against Janna, but requires you to get the lane, and Twitch is pretty much always a lane swap for Samsung White. Face of Pawn right now. So calm, as always, hovers the Katarina. Doesn't decide to actually pick it. He wants to know if that is actually the mid lane or if Acorn's going to be taking that to the top lane. So it looks like maybe in the Kassadin as well. Could be Loopers. A lot of flex picks on both sides, or at least one, as it is going to be right. the Kassadin lock-in coming through. Yeah, they don't know where it that. is. They can swing that wherever they want, honestly. And it will create some confusion as far as Blue having to finish up everything, not knowing really either of their completely in opponents, but honestly, Blue should keep doing this. They should keep picking some heavy yes, control sir. champions. It would be a little surprising if they throw Acorn up on Rise, but the control that Dade had on Twisted Fate in that Cloud 9 game yeah. was really, really high. Yeah, he is, I mean, it is, Twisted Fate is the most played champion for Dade in competitive play. Like, he's known for it as well. Like, he's so good in Twisted Fate. He can basically snowball every single lane in the game, which is what Samsung Blue kind of need to actually stop Samson White, Samson White for being so dominant he's in the early game. Def needs to be breaking out Corky. As Double have said, he's probably the best yep. Corky anyone has seen in League of Legends history. The reason he doesn't want to go Corky right here... Heavy, too much magic damage. Yes, there's too much magic damage if it goes for the Corky pick. So it's kind of forced on Lucian yep. now when you had Rice, you had Twisted Fate, even the Sona coming in. Well, we do see Dade picking up that TF. He can now get around the map that's kind of telling us he wants to feed those lanes even more. Pawn grabs the Fizz. We've seen a lot of lackluster Fizz play here. Can Pawn change that around? <laughs> if anyone's going to make it work, yes. it's the guy who's been able to pick anything and succeed on it. We've seen his Katarina. Yeah. Now we get to see his Fizz, a double assassination comp, maybe just a full assassination comp if you count Twitch as an assassin here. For sure. White is going to try and play the same crazy spread out killing style. Explosive, Mickey. But Blue has a bit more control this time. This game right here is going to be decided by Dade on Twisted Fate. Right. Because Twisted Fate against pick comps is so good because he's so good at reacting to the picks being set up here. 
And first of all, with his ulti, he can see how many members are about to join the fight. And then obviously he can react in time, help out whatever member is being jumped, and quickly turn it around in favor of Samson Blue here. So if, as long as Dada can survive the laning phase against the Fist, which shouldn't be a problem for him, there's kill potential for Fist, but Twisted yeah. Fate can always sit back and farm. Then he should be able to actually somewhat control the game. Just one player. But well, let's see. Easier said than done, yes, for sure. Exactly. The teams are loading into the game three. It's just about to get underway. So head over to Twitter once again and vote for the team you think will win. Send hashtag SSB win or SSW win to at LOL Esports. Don't forget the hashtag. We're going to be reading those later. And hopefully a big level six coming out of blue here so they can make an impact where they've been trying to in that mid game. Because as they fall once again, I think this could be a quite, qu quite quick 3-0. That's the direction it's going, but we've seen 2-0 swap back yes, the other way have. on numerous occasions. And if Blue can get their confidence back and wound the egos here of Samsung White, maybe they have a chance of coming back in this series because when White starts rolling and playing with confidence, they look near unstoppable. Yeah, and the laning phase here, I mean, Rise is, is having a fairly easy lane against Kassadin in a one-on-one, -on -one, so that's going to be an easy, easy lane for Akon to deal with. Bottom lane is heavily in favor of Samsung Blue, which means with the Twitch pick, there's a very high chance we see the lane swap from Samsung White, like we've seen actually in every single game so far with the lane swaps. Yeah, and I fear for Dade's laning phase against Pond's Fizz. I've seen a lot of Fizzes just go off against TF and lane, especially if he gets a little bit of an edge, and especially since Pawn has had such an advantage over Dade this whole series. Yeah, it's all about the outplay potential here. If you go in with your Q on Fizz and you save your Trickster, your E, for when the gold card is being being shot in the air from the Twisted Fate and you dodge it, then you have the all-in potential. There's Ghost Flash though, like we often see from Dade when he can. And that Ghost can be very important if Pawn wants to try like a max range ulti to try and uh, hit him with it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of alties used quite fast in this one. We've seen three-minute dragon fights and even earlier skirmishes in the jungle. Samsung White did not come out good on the end of that second game skirmish, losing one but still coming out on top in the game. A very hard force to stop and right now, putting everything on the plate. It's like they're coming into these with a roll of quarters in their fist for every fight here, and Blue's got to find a way to stop it. Look at that early game positioning. It's like they're actually predicting that White is camping on their blue and they're trying for a late counter invade but it's just it's not there it's completely missed and they will get spotted here by an outside ward but they should be able to get the 2v2 lane here samsung white can still send twitch down in the bottom side and just fast push a lane now they do see death and heart in the top side and that's actually what they do so in the current meta you can pretty much guarantee a lane swap because you don't have to freeze the lane anymore necessarily you can fast push it have your members be on the bottom side of the map in this case and still deny the enemy top laner all the farm. So that, therefore, Samson White, because they were around the mid lane, can just send Twitch down bottom side now. It's dangerous for Blue. They haven't been able to pull off this lane swap. They weren't able to match the lane swap. And they're going for a fast push because they want this lane swap to last the shortest possible amount of time. They're going to get three buffed. Yep. Mata was already at the red buff here. Uh, they're running in. Probably. Probably. We might see an early fight here. We may Probably just see an points. early fight. It depends if Imp decides to faint over there or if Pawn beats TF to the punch. Well, the Ward Wars have definitely already gone down on this one. Red buff in the brush. Wow. The Hurricane. Wow. What a great Janet Tornado. Right Howling there. Howling Gale, Hurricane, Tornado. <laughs> Call it whatever you want. The point is, you knock up the Rengar, he cannot get the smite oh, steal. Oh. They might have seen Imp go invisible on that one. Definitely the ping's going down, but look at this. Three to the bot lane. They have so much vision right now of what's going on, on the side of blue, and they're going to be sharing a bit more experience than they want to here. Let's see how they work this one out. It's going to be Mata and Imp soaking this one up. Already pushed up to the turret. And because so many members from Samsung Blue already showed on the bottom side, it means Looper can now teleport top lane once the wave actually hits the tower and get solo experience where Akon has to share with Heart down his bottom side. Let's see if he decides to do it. He's going back to base now. Instant teleport top. I really feel like Blue is completely beaten out early on in the game here, and Acorn actually gets hit again. That's gonna be some big damage. The exhaust to stay in Whoa. range. Oh my gosh, they actually pull off the kill as well. You can see the crowd is even stunned on that one. What a burst of damage right there. Yeah, there was the exhaust here, and there was no armor runes on Acorn because he obviously was against a castle in lane against double AP, so there was no armor runes either. 
and they didn't force the swaps properly, honestly. Acorn was trapped down bottom. They had the jungler there in case of some extra aggression. They ended up there with an extra support. They had sustained, but they ended up getting all in. Everything just came cascading down in the wrong direction for Blue here, and they're still not going to be able to manipulate these lanes right. And just the worst possible start when you've just been so down because you've been absolutely destroyed in two games. We saw them after the game here. Everyone was just looking down the ground. And then you go yep. in and you give first blood to Twitch, the champion you banned in the last game. Nice play by Dada here. Notice how he's actually holding on to the gold card, waiting for the jump. Then he lands. I mean, I'm just looking at this game before it happens, just team composition-wise. We already talked about it. Acorn would, would have had a lane advantage over Looper. Def would have had a lane advantage over Imp. But what's ended up happening, actually, is Looper is in a better situation because he didn't die like Acorn did. Imp is in a better situation than Def because he got a kill in lane. And the mid lane, of course, is in the favor of Samsung White. So just like we've seen in all these other games, everyone on White is winning, even though the composition shouldn't dictate that necessarily happening. Well, we already know you give White a bit of an advantage and they will completely run with it. Heart level two here, can't do much to save Acorn. The damage already knocking Acorn out of lane. His flash is gone, so he has to walk away from these instants. Janna shield from Mata onto a Twitch as well. I mean, you have so much damage on this Rise, there's no armor oh, no. in his runes. Let's see his spirit, nope. Good find coming in from Dandy there. Nice pressure towards the top lane. Def is going to have to push out of that. And when Spirit White thought he was safe, he was. He is so far ahead of Blue right now in mentality and in play. Blue is being read like a book right here. Everywhere they want to go, White is there first or they're countering. Cassidy, while he was getting his double golems taken, was able to help set up a kill with Dandy. Everything for White is working. You got Dade trying to fuel people on TF. How much harder does it become when each of your lanes is behind as you're going to Destiny to them? Yeah, that obviously is going to make it a lot harder, but Samsung Blue does have a nice setup for Twisted Fate because you have their crowd control from Sona, you have it from the Rise, so you have a lot of ways to lock down a target and then Dade can join in. But if every lane falls too far behind, Samsung White might even be able to like 2v3 them even if Twisted Fate comes down because every lane is so far ahead. And we just have to highlight the Ward at the blue buff from Samsung White to see Def and Hart going to top side and therefore knowing we're not going to go top side with Twitch, we're going to send him bottom lane was so important because he prevented the standard lanes, which would have been so heavily in favor of Samsung Blue. On picking up two ability tones as he goes back. It'll be very nice for him. Spirit clearing out a pink ward. He has one though. That's knowledge already to White that there is going to be a pink ward on the red buff. We'll see if Spirit can start to make some impacts. He's level four right now to Dandy's five, who already has himself a kill, already on that stone to stay healthy in the jungle. He's actually waiting here. He thinks he's gonna see something. They're playing very safe, even with this lead. 700 gold, two kills, seven and a half minutes. And for Blue, they need to be able to switch to defensive mode and really pick their spots. And they still have a few options to pick the right spots. When Spirit hits level six, Dada can try and combo a gank. That's kind of the Samsung Blue special that got them so far and made Dade's Twisted Fate a little bit feared as well in so many situations. It's just with the vision control of White, they're trying to block both the river and also the own jungle of Blue. And since Spirit already used a sweeper, got warded again, there's actually no way for Dade to gank bottom lane with the ward coverage of White right now. No, and you constantly see them ward very far in here around the camps as well, so they can always spot Spirit before he even gets to pop his ult in, forcing him to lane gank if he wants to go for any kind of gank huh. because his jungle is deep warded from the start here. There is some good wave there from Samsung Blue, which they can use to kind of sit back and, and chill, but if you fall too far yeah. behind, Zero just going to get dove. We see Dade there wild carding the warded brush instead of allowing Looper to just sit there, lose experience. Dade says, yeah, you're alerted, you're sitting on a ward. So he's just giving knowledge right now to White. A little bit on edge here. On, got 70 to 60 in that lane. Not a huge discrepancy, but it is gonna be blue over to Pawn now. We may see some action at that Dragon Pit. Yeah, and that's where White has kind of made their mark in these previous games. It's either right before the Dragon Fight or at the Dragon Fight. They've come ahead of Samsung Blue time and time again. Maybe it's a moment where Blue just gives it up or goes aggressive them themselves before any of that happens. Yeah, yeah. they have to set up a pick first. 
and then go for it. They cannot risk starting off the dragon, take damage from the dragon, and then the triple assassination from Samson White comes in, and the chase potential when you have a Cassidy in as well, if the fight goes wrong for Samson Blue. Lose that fight, get a few kills like this and cast it in, and the game is over. So I feel like they have to go for a pick first if they want to start dragging. So oh, yeah. blue. Have to consider now, White is alert of that window where Dade can use his destiny and get a play for the rest of the team. Right now, they're all quite pushed up. So it doesn't look like much can be used from that at this point. Nine and a half minutes in, we're going to see Blue trying to do what they can to continue feeding Def these resources. Spirit's here to try and do that already. Yeah, and Samsung Blue is really going back to what used to work for them. A lot of defensive pink wards as well. Look at the three pink wards they have here. Dada is actually standing on one of them. Simply to make sure you can use the Twisted Fate. Here's Dalton coming in. Doesn't matter if the lane is pushed. It's going to be a big hit, and they are going to take down him. They are going to drop Mata. Looper comes down very late on this one, but safety to get himself out of that one. And Blue tries to make the first move here as they go six, and they go hard. For pretty much the first time this series, Blue makes a move that can't be countered by Samsung White. That's the magic of the Twisted Fate plus Rengar. They appear on top of the turret. White is not safe, and now they push for more. Five-minute Dragon against three of Samsung White. Exactly what we talked about here. Samsung Blue had to sell they want to steal. First. They want to steal. Let's see what they can do. He's oh! Gone. The Prince of Thieves comes up once again, kicks away, almost to safety. That's a kill going over to Spirit. But Looper has finalized himself. One, two, possibly three with one more rift. No, he's just going to get the triple kill off an easy Q. It does not look good right now for Acorn. He's going to be falling from the tree. Possible quadra kill. Pawn's going to pick one up for himself. Beautiful job at Dragon. And once again, Blue reaches a little bit too far. The Dragon Seal was just the icing on the cake because when White collapsed on that Dragon Pit, there was no hope for Blue. They burned everything during their initial turret dive and they had nothing left when the fight happened. Well, let's just rewind a little bit. We're just gonna see the fight again. This is three members from Samson White. Dandy gets the steal. We've seen it so many times back in OGN as well. And then the castle in here can just start cleaning up kills. Dada goes down first, flash in with the E, and meanwhile, Master rejoins, and now the castle in chase just starts. And it's, it's too much. I mean, they were low on mana, they did not have ultimates, and White was there to collapse. Blue could have been happy getting the kills and getting out of there. Yeah, very that's, true. That's what Blue needed to do in any of the games this series, is make it to 20 minutes without losing the game. But you also have to look at it from Samsung Blue's point of view. Everything has gone wrong for two games in a row. The whole idea was we pink ward our own jungle, right. so Twisted Fate mm -hmm. and Ringar can get in for the gank. We get the kills, we take the dragon, we go back to laning phase, and we relax. We get into late game here, we slow down the game. That was the whole idea. The problem was, as we also mentioned, as soon as this dragon fight goes wrong, a lot goes wrong. A lot goes wrong because Kassadin and Fizz, they get the kills. Dada is like, I have to snowball now. And he buys the Soul Stealer. And every time we see Blue coming to these games, they want to skirmish. They don't bring the exhaust. Mata and Dandy calling the battle orders, doing so well. And Mata brings the exhaust out to shut anybody that it's there going to make an impact. Yeah. The fallout from that dragon fight is still echoing here. I mean, Looper finishes his Rod of Ages at 12 minutes. Wow. Dade probably at that moment just says, he has no way of winning this game unless he gets a bunch of kills by himself. But the problem is, Bolt the team is not there. set up to help him there, and White can do wow. whatever they want. Blue is completely out of sorts now. Surgically removing Blue from the map at this point. White will grab a turret off of this if they even choose to. Keeping the lanes going is a little bit of what's getting them their kills. We see Blue trying to push down on the bottom lane now as White will answer with a drop on top. Bit of a race. Dade getting hit up. He could just get Howling Gale right out of a destiny. Why he's not trying to get out of this one. He's able to walk out. He has wards on the backside to stay safe there. And he's also giving a little bit of pressure relief here to the bottom lane so they can make an impact. But not much of an impact because they don't have too many forward wards to stay safe for too long on the side of white. See what they can do with the rest of this. We see Spirit actually behind as well. A kill to himself, but he does go for the Moby Boots again. We've been seeing it on Rengar's. Still, still trying to make plays, and making plays indeed. That's the pop-up. Here comes the expunge, locks it down. And the poison, along with all the damage, enough to take Dade down. He just got back from base. Yeah, but when you lose your mid tower so early, it simply opens up for the other team to get in, 
Plays a few deep wards. We can see it from Samson White here on the minimap in the jungle of Samson Blue. And then just start setting up these picks. You're never safe anymore because they can see pretty much the entire map. And if you find a Twisted Face standing in mid lane alone, you go for the kill. Yeah, and White's just going to keep going here. They're walking right over wards, and Blue has to give up position because we know how strong Dandy and the rest of White is right now. I just see Blue being in total desperation mode right now and not having the item to fight. But here they go. The destiny goes, so Vision is everywhere they need it to. Spirit, so low, Heart! Just as low in a matter of seconds, a double kill coming in for Pawn. It doesn't matter what he's on. The team's ready and willing to continue the kills. There we get another one going over to Dandy, and the obliteration begins once again now. We're only 15 minutes in. It's a 7,000, well, 6,000 gold lead as they hit 20k. Yeah. But you can see Spirit he looks de dejected at this completely point. Completely defeated. They looked a little bit defeated before the game, yeah. and they had that glimmer of hope when they pulled off the Twisted Fate Rengar gank, but they only get pretty much one positive play in this entirety of the semifinal series, and this was just a poor decision from the start. Yeah, they're going, I mean, Ryze is not there, so it's actually a 4v4, but they're already so far behind. Instantly, two members goes down, Tricks are coming in, hitting both of them, and just, once again, watch you drop low. Kassadin and Aleeson is never gonna let you get away, so they can just keep chasing these kills. And this yeah. has to be one of the most one-sided series I have seen. Which is ever. remarkable, because Blue yeah. has so consistently controlled Samsung White in best of five series. Two seasons of champions in a row, they defeat them in the semifinal. And what the, the ultimate revenge for Samsung White to destroy them probably 3-0 yeah. at Worlds. It's It has to feel amazing for them right now, but honestly, pretty devastating for Blue as well. We say these teams aren't sister teams, but it's like Blue is trying to replicate the battle strategies of White. That mid game was not what they played throughout the season, and it seems to really be hurting them as that's been their focus in three straight games. Yeah, they're just getting completely outplayed, and I think for me, we have talked about it before, the pick and ban phase. Now oh, no. Oh, wow. Well. Nobody said The pick and ban phase, the last two times these teams faced each other, has actually been in favor of Samsung Blue. They're normally very fast right. at, at adapting to, like, new picks. Absolutely. Summer semifinal, it was a Maokai pick for Akon, which was a huge deal. Samsung White had to ban it, like, in every single game after losing to it. But now we've been on the same patch for such a long time, doing Worlds. And it just seems like Samsung White has the edge in champ select. Samsung Blue no longer has they that do. advantage. White has every edge. They can ban whatever they want. They can play whatever they want. Obviously, I mean, they, they played so many different strategies. Pawn's champion pool is like an ocean at this point. I, <laughs> I haven't seen him bad on any single champion, which is crazy because when he kind of first switched over to White, he was this defensive Oriana right. six player yeah, yeah. that All the time. Obviously, he had a few standout moments where he'd get the solo kills, but everyone saw him as this defensive player. Now I look at this player, and he is just this remarkably ambitious, versatile, agile player that can do anything the team requires. And that is really the funny thing, because before he joined the Samsung team, he was known as a Fizz main, like a Fizz god, actually. When he was playing on, like, amateur teams, and then he joined Got on the Samsung blue lineup here, in this case after the swap as well, and it was kind of like, okay, you're gonna play utility-based mid laners. But he's always been an assassin player, and now he's really getting to play during Worlds, and he's just shining on it. Absolutely, back on point. Now giving Spirit a little bit of hell in his own jungle. We can see that Hart really can't even reply to this. Gets him right out. Not even gonna help that Spirit tries to throw on the ulti. Not enough time there, and they have Hart on the run as well. Looper's just drawing in more oh, of no. a fight here. They have a full team of white coming behind them. Hart's just running, trying to get out. He's not gonna solidify that kill onto Looper. He's way too tanky with the Rod of Eight. He's already charged up. And that's one thing that Blue is as well, is trying to charge up a lot of items that they're not gonna have time to charge up now. You know, we saw the first and the second game, and white was basically getting one kill per minute. The fact that they've been able to keep this up for every single game in this series. Crazy. It is so crazy how good they are in this matchup, how well they've prepared, and the domination that they have shown in this. I mean, for all the buildup, all the 3-2 white, 3-2 blue, this series could go either way. White is just rewriting the book of this matchup between these two teams. And just look at how they changed their picks. Assassin's mid lane, even Looper oh, is playing like Assassin champions with their Kali in game one, with the Cassidy in this game here. He normally plays like the utility tank top laners. So Samson White before This is ugly. 
I mean, yeah, they're just going to keep killing the cliff. 2v1 right. right now. Doing what he wants. Dandy going where he pleases. The cripple hits. He's going to have the connection. The Howling Gale will pop him up. There's the Zephyr, the exhaust, and Pawn just plops right down for this another is kill. One of the biggest stomps of all of Worlds. Yeah. And that's pretty much counting group stage. The gold lead at the end of game one was the largest gold lead in all of Worlds. If we were to track through the history of League of Legends and best of fives, the accumulated kill death score and the total gold lead of that series, I doubt you'd find one worse than this one. Absolutely and it's in the not. seven finals of Worlds. It is miraculous what White is doing right and now. And it's crazy how it got almost earlier and earlier. Each game now 19 minutes for the inhibitor. It only took him a few more minutes than the first game to close out number two. But it looks like they're going for some bit of a record here in a best of three series not wanting to go five games we still see depth trying to push spirit getting caught out once again you're up you're down there's almost no time to have on the rift right now for blue as they are just getting taken out every time they are on top of a ward or scene still damage from looper or rather depth but he's not going to get these kills just to hop away from looper and he's still drawing uh, the oh. attention oh here comes pawn here comes pawn indeed there's the damage. He's going to be able to lock this one down. Relentless Pursuit was already used. The catch-up is there. Heart goes down on the other side of the map as well, and things are getting a little out of hand at this point. 23 to 3, 20 minutes in with an 11,000 gold lead. This is one of those games where Blue knows it's the last game before they're eliminated for Worlds, so they don't want to give up, and everyone is trying to make a play, but it is just leading to disaster right now. I feel so bad for Dade. I mean, Worlds last year, it looked yeah. so good going into Worlds. Disappointing performance by everyone by himself. Now, once again, they looked extremely good coming in. They're the number one seed from Korea. He got MVP in the spring yep. when they won the whole thing, got good to the question. final again. Step up. And now, they're at Worlds, and they're just getting completely destroyed. That guy is not meant to win Worlds. I mean, they're losing to a team that is playing so remarkably well in pretty much every single position. I mean, we talk about the way that Samsung White generally operates. It's Dandy and Mata placing the wards and making the plays with two defensive solo laners, generally speaking. Yes. But they have been unleashed in this semifinal. Pawn and Looper are just doing stuff on their own, and this team is an unstoppable force right now. And that is exactly why Samsung White in the past haven't been able to close the game fast enough against Samsung Blue, because they had the more passive solo laners at that time. But now when you just give them these assassin picks and you get this leader early on, which we have seen them have before against Samsung Blue, they can just completely snowball out of control and give Blue no chance. Snowball out of control indeed. It's rolling down the hill quite fast. Fish goes out. Acorn gets chomped on that one. And it looks like Dade will also fall. Spirits in the eyes of Pawn right now, missing the bola. But it looks like it's not going to matter. We see Hart going down the other side of the map. It's going to be another clean ace if they catch up to Spirit. They have all the time in the world to work on these inhibitor turrets. Actually, on the Nexus turrets right this now. This might be it right and now. With game, we saw they them. They going to the finals right now. Huge, 28 to three, 22 minutes in. Are they really going to knock it down right now? The quickest in this best of five series, and they do not hesitate to drop the Nexus. It's only going to take three. Samsung White finally defeats Samsung Blue. And in such a remarkable fashion, three incredibly one-sided fast games. They do it in such style. Picking Akali in the top lane, Cassidy in the top lane, Assassins in the mid lane. Really, anything they felt like playing is what it felt like to finally defeat the team they could not get past. In this way, is legendary. We have our first finals team to come in now. Somebody, Starhorn Royal Club or OMG will be playing against Samsung White as they now hug with their brother team, sister team I should say, understanding what that means to them in a 3-0 defeat as well. Who would have thought, man? Yeah, and I just love these pictures right here. Both teams, kind of like, Deft is obviously completely different. They say that they are enemies in game but brothers outside of it. And you can really see this here. White, the team that deals Blue a crippling victory, and also the team that tries to console them afterwards, right? You can see the relationship that these guys have together. But in game, you know the gloves are off. Very much so. Sure. Business is business. Mentality coming in for them. No way.
Pond oh. gets the general's jacket. Wow. And Dade, wow. even with a smile on his face. That is a big moment. That is a jacket Dade never takes off. No, never. he does not. That's him paying respect here for what just happened. Amazing amounts of respect. Dade wore that when we were in Taiwan, in Singapore, where it was extremely hot, never took it off. That was his mentality because he knows how much power just that jacket itself held in the vision of the community and the vision of what everybody saw. And really, White had it on their plate. We have to take down the general to take down the rest of the army. And now it's what they did every game. Yeah, everything just clicked for Samson White. This tournament right here. The fact they changed up the picks, more aggressive, yeah. get the assassins now going. So the early lead, they always seem to build up. They can now use to just completely roll over the enemy teams. And it's just working for them. They've improved so much. Everyone is talking about it when we talk with the teams about Samsung White and they say we've been scrimming them and we've been losing to them every single game pretty much. I mean, this is such a dominant team. I can't wait to see what they can do in the final. And we kind of look at the composition, right? They, they, Sam, or Samsung White lost the TSM with a low wave clear composition. That's pretty much a low wave clear composition, but they did not let that happen this time. They showed how strong that could actually be. Yeah.